Are you tired of the violence? Tired of the injustice? Police brutality, rampant discrimination, lack of gun control in this failed by a socioeconomic experiment called America? Or maybe you need a break from the relentless grind and want to regain control of your destiny, your wealth, your health, and your purpose. Diversifiedgame.com has the right course for you. Prepare for my first trip to Africa. Looking to reconnect with your roots, start a new business, or just a fresh start. Africa, aka the motherland, is waiting. Don't let the Chinese and the Mazungus have the fun and also take over the motherland. From Cairo to Mombasa, from Dakar to Cape Town, Africa has something for everyone from business opportunities to the most amazing people, safety, leisure, and landscapes. The opportunities abound. It is time for the diaspora to reconnect with their roots. Time to reconnect with the birthplace of humanity. Africa is the last frontier. Get your head in the game and reclaim your legacy. The writing is on the wall. Babylon is falling. Give up the stress, grind and violence inflicted on our people on this continent and prepare for a journey of restoration and joy by connecting with the land of your ancestors. Check out our new course and kick off your adventure at diversifygame.com. Now, I shared a video from Facebook of a brother that went to a, I guess, town hall style meeting with old Jim Crow Clyburn. And he wanted to ask Clyburn some questions about HR 40 and other things that the brother seen that was going to be an issue for the black community. I want you to listen to our brother, but I also want you to pay attention to how Clyburn responds to that. Let's go ahead and roll the clip. Great. You spoke about the HBU. That's a, that's a great thing. But statistics shows that 20%, 20% of black Americans are college educated. Meanwhile, we still, the 20% of us have a whole bunch of debt, right? The other 80% of black Americans mostly work in the service economy. So that's good for the HBCUs, but the rest of black America is pretty much being starved out. That's all I wanted to say. And on top of that with HR 40, we were on uh, something called Fix HR 40, where we put pressure on all of our congressional leaders to get HR 40 to the floor. We sat there for about 10 hours and watched that whole judiciary process. We saw it play out. Nancy Pelosi can bring that to the floor anytime she wants. We have been monitoring HR 40 and it's been stolen out for the most part. You worked on the floor, you wanted the passage. What we're trying Both. to say, sir, what we're trying to say, sir, is that because of public pressure, to, so it's for history, right? HR 40, right, it was introduced by John Conyers in 1987. It sat dormant for over 30 years, right? No. So, yes, it did, sir. It yes, it did. Every year. Every he did years. introduce it every year, but it never got passed. We're talking and about something my whole, almost my whole adult life. This thing never passed at all. Now there is public sentiment. There's energy behind it, right? The CBC just, uh, they did a Twitter poll. They asked us, what do you prefer? Do you prefer, okay. hold a second, sir, hold a second, hold a second, sir, I'm almost done. Okay, sir, on. sir, it's all due respect. There's no emotion in this. We're just concerned. These are facts we're, we're presenting. We're just concerned. We're just highly concerned because by 2050, black American wealth is going to be at zero. Meanwhile, other groups' wealth are going upward. While our wealth is, is deteriorating, sir, we're just highly concerned. That's it. Right. We just want a better quality of life for ourselves and our children. I have two children myself. The tax credit is great. It's great. But after the tax child credit, it's like that's just paying the bills okay. and that's it. It's still not helping us okay, out of the predicament right. that we're in, which is concerning. Okay, so that's it. That's okay. it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your lecture. We'll address it. We're going to move on. We have to allow others. Yeah, we move on. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. So as you've seen, our brother is really concerned about the future of black America. He's trying to address the permanent underclass status that this country is trying to take black America to. Well, you can see everybody else coming into this country, stepping on our backs to get their American dream while black folks still at the bottom having their American nightmare. Now, when you had the Congressional Black Caucus originally came together, they were supposed to be representation for black people in government. But it did not turn out to be that way down the line, as you could see based on even how they vote. They're not fighting for black folks like that. 
They're Democrat first. That's what they are. And part of Democrat first is not giving anything to black people except symbolism. I'll give you June 19th as a federal holiday, but I won't give you reparations. I won't give you business loans. I won't give you the things that you need to survive in, in your communities. I won't do that, but I'll give you a federal holiday. And Clyburn, the way that he just, he heard him, he wanted to argue with him. When he said that Nancy Pelosi could bring this on the floor at any time, the Democrats are in control of the house. What's wrong with her bringing up HR 40? It's a study, right? The Senate, they have, they're supposed to be in control, right? What's wrong with bringing it to the Senate? It's just a study, right? Listen, they don't even want to give y'all a study. Do you understand that? They don't even want to give you a study. They gave the Asians a whole federal hate crime bill. They didn't rank as the highest victims of, of hate crimes, according to the FBI statistics. And yet they gave them a whole bill and Jim Crow Joe signed $50 million for them on executive order. They, want, they don't like black folks so much that they won't even give black folks a study. Do you hear me? Now, Jim Crow Joe going to say, well, hey, I, I set aside some money with the USDA for black farmers to get uh, loans that's forgivable. Yes, but you didn't protect it enough where now you have white farmers suing and stopping the money from going to the black farmers, which is less than 100000 in America. Statistically speaking, on the loans with the USDA, white farmers overwhelmingly get all the loans. Black farmers don't get anything. And then a the little bit they so-called tried to do. White farmers are blocking that in federal courts because y'all didn't do it enough to protect it from that sort of thing from happening. So he says, so he'll say, I try to do that for farmers. And even if you did it for farmers, it's less than a hundred thousand people. You have 40 million people, right? But our elected officials, you know how Clyburn feel about the younger generation? Because I've been watching him for at least the past year or two. He has this attitude. How dare you say anything to him? Y'all need to be just grateful just for me being uh, in Congress. And, it, and, and he's fine. Like, listen, the brother talking about 2050, Clyde Byrne looking at him like, man, I'm, I'm not going to be here no 2050. That ain't my problem. That's how Clyde Byrne was looking at him. Like, man, I got my money. You know, I, I'm just, you know, whatever. Whenever the good Lord ready for me, it is what it is. But I, I left some, some money for my family. I'm good. I'm not worried about what y'all. That's the way Clyde Byrne is looking in this video. And that's been his, his thing. He don't care about black folks, but also if you look at that video and pan the room, a lot of the people that's in that room is in Clyde Burns age bracket. A lot of them. And let's talk about voting here for a minute. Clyde Burns keep going back up there because people in his district keep voting him back in. That's what it is. So it's going to take the young people, the Gen Xers, the millennials, those of you who can vote right now, it's going to take y'all to get registered to vote in Clyde Burns district in mass numbers and pick a candidate, whoever y'all are going to pick and run against Clyde Burns and get him out of there. It's going to take the young people to get him out of there because let me tell you something. I have some definitely people in Clyde Burns generation that love my show and I, I love them. You know, they, they, they understand they can't stand what they're seeing. Some of them say our generation is just messed up and say we had it. And we just dropped the ball, right? A lot of them get it. But then you have some that's only, only care about seeing a black face. I don't, I don't want to see a black face represent white power. I don't want to see it. I'd rather a white person be there. If that's what they're going to be. I was keeping it 100 with you. Matter of fact, I'd rather see the open white supremacists in that position. Because at least I see where he's coming from. Not this old slick thing that, that the, the, the liberals pull because you have to understand something, whether it's left wing or white right wing is still white supremacy. The difference with the left wing is they will allow black faces to represent white power in the left wing. Oh, they allow that. They cool with that. Long as they don't do nothing for black people. We cool. You could do something for everybody else. Cause Clyde Byrne, all them voted on that, that hate crime bill that's for Asians. They didn't come up and say, hey, wait a minute. Okay, cool. Well, you know what? Let's add black people to this bill. Because you notice, every time it's something for black people, it's always 
black and this group, black and, oh, black and other minorities, black and brown, black and this. But when it comes to giving stuff to, to other people, oh, only Asians get it. Well, why, why wasn't it called the black and Asian hate crime bill? Why was it called that? Because black folks, according to FBI statistics, suffer more hate crimes than any other group. So this should have been a shoe in. Why the Congressional Black Caucus in unison didn't say that? No, because they don't care about black folks like that. They don't. And you can say, we care about our community. No, your actions show if you care. No, don't show up in, in, in the neighborhoods and say, yeah, man, we suffer as black people. And you got the power to do something about it. You don't put up no bills. You don't do anything. At least put the bills up and try to fight for the bill and say, hey, Nancy Pelosi and them won't let me do it. I'm trying. Yeah, and then, then we can approach that. But y'all not even doing that. Because the majority of y'all are comfortable. You don't want to ruffle no feathers. You don't want to do anything. You want to wait until, I don't know, whenever you choose to retire from Congress or you wait until, until the good Lord take you out of here. You don't want young people to take them positions. It's a lot of them. A lot of them, like I said, are, need to be with their grandkids somewhere. Don't want the Gen Xers. Don't want the millennials. I said that it's time for the Gen Xers and millennials to take over now because that, that, that group right there has caused so much problem. And you even listen, you even got white folks that, that, that even say the same thing. They the one that came up with the hashtag. Okay. Boomer. They came up with that. It wasn't black people because they were saying that look at all the problems y'all causing. It's time for us to take over. Now we think different and that's what they're afraid of. They do not want that fundamental change that's going to happen in America with the Gen Xers and millennials. They don't want that. Oh, they don't want it. Cause even Younger, even younger white folks see some of the things that is going on just not right. And that's what they don't want. They want to hold on to the, to the racism. And you got black folks, you know, from that generation, just cool with symbolism and a black face, but you don't got to do nothing for black people. And we're tired of that. So what's going to have to be, it's going to have to be young people going out to vote and get Clyburn out. Y'all don't understand because it gets to a point. We can't just keep complaining on Clyburn or complaining on this one, or complaining on that one. You need to get registered to vote and get them out of there. And being registered to vote is your right. I believe you have a right to, should have a right to vote, and it's your right not to, if that's what you choose to do. But I believe your local politics is more, is more important than national politics. Your uh, people you vote for, for your mayor, your judges, your uh, DA, the sheriff, city council, those things are important. Your congressperson, very important. It's not that electoral college crap, which I believe, I still say that's, that's a rigged system. The electoral college is, but one vote, one, one, uh, uh, goes toward that particular candidate. You need to vote on your senators as well. You need to vote on your state senators. You need to vote on the governor. You need to vote on those things. Especially when you're trying to uh, uh, get some things done. Clyburn is not the person for you. He's freaking Uncle Ruckus. That's what he is. And don't come to me talking about, I ain't going to vote. Listen, the thing is, you can't tell me one minute you don't want to vote or anything, but you hardcore waving an American flag, talking about you black American, you Captain Black America. Okay, if you're Captain Black America, then you invested into American politics, right? You can't say that you're Captain Black America, but you don't want to invest into any kind of the politics. You don't want to control your politics. That's silly. That's the most silly thing that I, I see some black folks say. You're not going to control the politics. You got this, these cities that's uh, made up of a lot of black folks, and you're not trying to take over the politics. You're not trying to take over the sheriff, take over the mayor, take over the city council. It should be all you. And I'm not talking about Boulay either. Let me make sure to say that because the Boulay have a way of worming their way into those positions. We're talking about brothers and sisters from the grassroots that the grassroots is behind, not Boulay. Because Boulay is Democrat first. You know that. They'll talk that talk with you here and there. They may even be controlled opposition every once in a while. But they, they, you know, if you notice the boule, they all got a look about them. They got a look. I mean, you could just see it on them. You can see the sellout on them. It, it, it's amazing how they all got that look. It, it's, it's a trip. Maybe it's just me and my discernment to see it on them. But y'all, y'all know they all got a certain look about them. They don't look like they, they battle tested. They don't look like they stood up for anything. They, they too, too polished. 
you know, your nails look, look too good. You know, your hair is, is too in place. You know, boy, you, you, just, you just look like you just haven't been through a thing. And you're talking about you come represent black people? Well, your battle scar is that brother, sister. I don't see him on you. I don't see a thing. You get me suspicious when I don't see no battle scars on you. But yeah, Claude Byrne, you know, y'all got to get him out of there. Y'all got to get him out. You can go to websites like Ballotpedia and, and, and look at when the time uh, him for, to be reelected. And right now, all of you in, in Clyde Burns district need to get registered to vote and get a campaign to get him out. That man is selling y'all out. If that man get back in there again, that's y'all fault. It's not even his fault at that point. It's your fault because you're not voting. Just call it what it is. But leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about the situation. Oh, well, Clyde Byrne, it's your first time uh, watching our channel. You know, make sure to subscribe. We also have, you know, a good amount of people that's watching that isn't subscribed. You know, we call it here ghost watching. You ain't got a ghost watch. Um, you can subscribe and find out everything that we are posting on a daily basis. These proceedings are concluded. This court is adjourned. If all this shit I did for this motherfucking company, then you. You ever had a great idea stolen from you and didn't know how to go about getting justice? In Charles Ford's The Anatomy of a Corporate Lynching, he takes us behind the scenes of his public copyright and civil rights lawsuit against his employer, Con Edison. In this explosive page-turner, Ford writes of an idea he submitted being taken and used without credit or compensation. In a book where no names have been changed to protect the guilty, Ford details how he stood his ground legally against theft and racial discrimination. Ford's exploration of a corporate lynching attempt inspires readers to pursue justice and fight back legally in the face of corporate opposition and retaliation. The Anatomy of a Corporate Lynching is available on Amazon Worldwide in paperback and on Kindle. Find Ford at author Charles Ford on Instagram.